Would you say that you've been waiting patiently for some tech tips involving Linux? Maybe some Linux tech tips? Oh, Lord. Yeah, no, really. That's just, I'm, I'm terrible. I'm sorry. Thank you for waiting patiently. Uh, it's been a while since I've done anything for this. The plan has been to uh, produce sort of Linux server-oriented content, but we've been kind of busy with the office move and the whole other thing. But we've also gotten a lot of support from fans, from Patreon, and things like that. So we've been trying to figure out a way that we can better monetize this content on YouTube or with ads or sponsorships or whatever, but also how we can produce content that will be relevant beyond just, you know, some talking head on YouTube. Because talking head on YouTube really is just not that useful. It's not, it's not interesting. And we want to sort of further the awesomeness of the Linux community. And we've talked a little bit about Linux on the desktop, but we haven't touched at all Linux on a server. And so what I've been up to, uh, I enlisted some help from some friends actually, because this is not something I could do by, by myself, um, to try to get more open source and more content sort of out there. We're gonna talk about running your own cloud and we're not gonna be able to do that in one video. I'm gonna to try to keep these videos relatively short, you know, 20, 30 minutes at most, hopefully, fingers crossed. Uh, the other thing is that I've discovered that in putting together some other tutorials that will probably never see the light of day, doing this in a video format is really hard and really time consuming and it actually takes way less time to just do a really good write up. And so what I'm gonna to try to do is get help from the community on the forum uh, tech syndicate site and have you guys sort of participate in writing uh, the tutorials and helping me iron out the bugs with the tutorials and make sure that I'm covering everything uh, that people understand. So somebody might look at a tutorial and say, hey, um, I don't understand why you did this step or why is this needed or don't you need to do this instead of this or oh, I know a better way to do that. Because you know, even though I've been using Linux for the better part of 10 years, uh, you can always learn something from somebody else depending on how they use things because it's, you know, it, it's kind of like Perl. Uh, Perl is the any man's language. You can have any kind of coding style you want with Perl. Well, Linux is like that for operating systems as well. So something we talk about a lot on our other shows is, you know, privacy and how you shouldn't have to rely on corporations to ensure your privacy. And, you know, with the cloud and all these other technologies, they're super convenient. And so I figured, okay, well, why don't we turn this into a series? Uh, so I posted a, a thread at, at Tech Syndicate a while back and asked for feedback and information and other stuff, other sort of community feedback as we began to put this together. What we're going to do is take you through a whole bunch of videos to show you how to begin to host your own services in the cloud. So you can still have the cloud, but it's the cloud under your control. You're not giving up your documents to Microsoft or, or anybody like that. We're gonna have another video that's about that specifically that comes out in the main channel uh, where we discuss you know, privacy and why you would wanna run your own clouds. Uh, but this is the Tech Linux channel. And so we're gonna talk about particulars. Now the first step in this is getting a domain name. Now you don't have to buy a domain name. You can use a free uh, dynamic DNS service uh, to get your domain name. But the domain name is the really important part of uh, of the hosting. A, a domain name is like google.com or, you know, ibm.com or slash dot dot org or, or whatever. And it converts that into an IP address so that it can be found so that you don't have to remember your IP address. Um, the next component beyond a domain name is hosting a server for hosting. We're going to talk a lot about really doing it yourself from scratch with a service like Linode, but you could just as easily drop in Amazon or anything like that. So what's it going to take for you to run your own Linux server or run your own cloud? Well, you need a machine to do it on and you need a domain name. I think the domain name makes it easy uh, for you to find yourself on the internet. And so what we've done is we've partnered with the .tech top level domain. So I've got Wendell.tech. We've also got uh, some other .tech domains that, that we're going to be using for demonstration purposes and as we go through the videos. We're also going to be using Linode because Linode has a referral program and hey, maybe we can get some free hosting with that. I don't know. Uh, you don't necessarily have to use Linode. You don't necessarily have to use .tech. If you don't want to buy a domain, there are free DNS services out there so that you could have something like, you know, yourname.noip.org or whatever. But you're going to have to learn a little bit about how the DNS service works and, and domain names and hosting and, and that kind of thing. And this is something where Linux really shines. So you talk about, you know, it's like, well, I want to keep using Windows because, you know, Windows desktop, or I want to keep using Mac because I like the Mac desktop. All right, you know, whatever, that's fine. Linux really shines in the server market. Linux has completely taken over already, in case you don't already know. You probably do. 
you guys are watching this and it's like all of you guys already know how to do all of this and it's like but that's okay we're going to bring more people into the fold and maybe it's going to be good i don't know uh, but Linux on the server, it's it's basically completely taken over the universe. It really has. Uh, Linux is on on pretty much everything. The desktop is really the thing where Linux has done the worst, and it's not it's not awful. It's just the least awesome thing with Linux is on the desktop. And so when you use Linux on the servers and you see the kinds of stuff that you can get on your own server, it really really is amazing. So over the course of this series, which is going to take many many months, um, we're going to talk about the different kinds of services you can get and setting up your server and things like that. The first video for today is really just getting your domain name and DNS and resources for learning more about how that works. And I'm sure people in the comments will link to more videos and more information explaining the particulars of DNS and explaining how all of it works. These videos are really just meant to be a friendly voice uh, sort of holding your hand as you learn about this yourself. I'm going to try to help you learn about it, but really you're going to have a lot of homework. You're going to have a lot of other videos you have to watch. You're going to have a lot of reading that you have to do. And at the end of this video, I'm going to give you some homework. <laughs> this is going to be a lot of fun. I think this is, this is probably going to be a fun way to do this particular Linux series. I'm not really sure what to call it. We're not going to call it uh, Linux tech tips. That's, that's not happening. That's just, no, we're not going to do that. But it is really cool that you can, you know, be able to run your own cloud and stream your own music and all this kind of stuff without without really technically turning over all of your data to a company. Now, you can make the argument, it's like, well, I am uploading all this stuff to little node. But hey, if you want to set up encryption on your disk so that, you know, whenever your Linode reboots or whenever something weird happens with your Linode server, you totally can. So you don't even necessarily have to use Linode. You can run this on the machine at your house, especially if you're doing, uh, you know, pretty well as far as the internet connectivity goes. Now, some ISPs don't like you to run a server at your house. And so later in the series, we're going to show you how you can set up a small instance on Linode, the, the least expensive one on Linode or Amazon or whatever. And that'll actually be the endpoint on the internet for your computer at home. So when you get email and, you know, people access your web page, they're going to hit the Linode, but the Linode's not going to store any information. You're going to have a VPN from the Linode to the server at your house that's running in your home internet connection if your home internet connection is good enough and you know I mean it's on the public internet but you know you're not really planning on having people access your domain name because you know your music library and documents and and whatever else is there uh, when you use it for yourself for your own internal use you know it doesn't matter that your home internet connection doesn't have a lot of bandwidth you're just gonna connect to the Linode which then connects to your home machine through an encrypted tunnel and your ISP can't see that you're you know, running a server at home. And you're not really technically running a server at home. You're not running a server for the internet. You're running a server for yourself. And the server that you're running for yourself is, you know, your own personal files and your own personal music and media and your own personal source code repository and, and your own personal wiki and, you know, those kinds of things. And it's really immensely handy. I mean, those are all cloud services, but it's really immensely handy to have all of that yourself. So the first part of this is your domain name. And yes, you don't have to get a .tech domain name. You can get any domain name that you want. But I got Wendell.tech, and I'm pretty excited about that. .tech, we've got a coupon. It's Tech Tech Linux. Uh, yes, it sounds confusing. But the, the, the code that you can copy-paste is in the description of this video. That will make the domain name fee go from $50 a year to $5 a year. And it helps us out a little bit, too, if you use that. So you can pick up a .tech domain, and then you would be able to host your own services. One of the services that this particular registrar provides with the domain name is a DNS service. And so a DNS service is a uh, sort of a mini server uh, that they host that will convert uh, name lookup requests for your domain into IP addresses. And so um, if you set up email, so I'll be Wendell at Wendell.tech, for example, that's not set up yet. But if I were to do that, um, then in DNS, you create an entry in DNS that says, hey, the mail server for Wendell.tech or your domain name.com or whatever uh, points to this IP address. The, the mail server for this is found at this IP address. Um, A records, which is like www, www.wendell.tech is found at this IP address. And those can all be different IP addresses. If you get really advanced setup, things like uh, SIP or federated services, or even if you want to sign up, you know, if you if you don't mind the cloud so much and you want to sign up for Office 365 or or Google Drive or you know other hosted email solutions, you can and you will have to configure it in in DNS in order to uh, actually make use of those services, but with your own domain name. And so instead of your email at Outlook.com, you can be your email at your domain name.com. Now they charge you know for that, but 
That's, that's the service model. Of course, you can also host it yourself. So that's the really exciting thing. So the first thing is to come to the .tech website and start searching for your domain name and you know see if you can find one that you like. Basically select it, buy it, set up a secure password. I would suggest that you use a, a password manager like KeePass2. Uh, KeePass2 is a pretty solid password manager. There are other password managers that you can use, but I like that one. Uh, anybody that has access to your uh, DNS control panel is going to be able to manipulate your domain name. So you really want to protect those credentials as, as much as you possibly can with whatever registrar you happen to pick. I also figure that most of you guys are going to be working in industry. You're going to be working as nerds, uh, you know, in, in various levels, you know, maybe you're a programming nerd, maybe system administration, maybe DevOps, maybe full stack developer, you know, I don't know. But being able to put your resume on and some basic stuff about you in a very lightweight web page, but also having other stuff accessible that's useful it seems like dot tech is a good fit for that now once you put in your coupon code the cost should be reduced to five dollars american which is not bad for a domain name and then you'll have a domain name now the next thing that you'll want is to figure out what you want for a server so dot tech provides dns service but it's not going to provide web hosting or email or anything like that if you want to host git repositories through ssh or you know other stuff it's not going to provide any of that if you want a raw sort of bare metal server then you can get that through somewhere like Linode. Linode has a lot of different options that range in, in price from $10 a month all the way up to basically as much money as you want to spend. Um, for our purposes, the one that's about $10 a month to the one that's about $20 a month will be fine for 99% of you guys. Uh, Amazon also has a similar service. You can sign up through Amazon, uh, Amazon EC2, the Elastic Compute Service. Uh, if you give them all of your personal information, your name and your home address and a whole bunch of other information, you can actually get the extra small instance for free for a year on Amazon, which is kind of cool. You only get a gigabyte of RAM and that kind of thing. You're not going to be running X Windows on the small instances on Linode, so you're not going to get a graphical environment. I mean, you might be able to, but it would just be an awful experience. And you don't really need it because we're going to man up and learn how to do this from the command line. So if you've already got a domain name, then hey, you're in, you're in pretty good shape. Now I mentioned your homework and keeping the videos to a relatively short length. Your homework on this is to go and look at some cool stuff. First is the thread on techsyndicate.com that has the upcoming content that I sort of talk about. You know, don't feel like you have to comment there, but just sort of know that this is a general direction that we're going. The next thing that you're going to do, which is a really amazing resource, is on Reddit and slash r slash self-hosted. This is a really great subreddit for all of the self-hosted stuff uh, that is out there because these are a lot of like-minded individuals. Don't harass them in comments. You've got to level up before you do that. But there's a lot of really awesome, cool stuff that is very bleeding edge. And so when you get into the bleeding edge, you'll be doing a lot of stuff yourself. And that's really a lot of fun. The other thing that I want you to look at is this GitHub page, which is a list of uh, all of the coolest self-hosted software that there is out there. And this, again, is more for, for DIY. But, you know, let's say that you're really into IRC, but every time you log on to IRC, people try to DDoS your your IP address. Well, at least when that happens now, if you're going through, uh, you know, if you're going through your extra small instance on Amazon, they're DDoSing your Amazon extra small instance. That's totally going to go offline, but at least you'll have internet. But there's a lot of other really cool stuff. You can host your own search engine. You can host your own wiki. You can host your own music server. Um, these are all a lot of really, really awesome things. The other two projects that I want you to look at, if you're not really into the whole, oh, I don't really want to do this one will node, but it sounds pretty good being able to run my own cloud and not having it be under the control. There's two things I want you to look at. Sandstorm and why you know host. This is Sandstorm. Sandstorm is really, really amazing work. What they've done here is they've uh, taken advantage of the containerization. That's sort of the hot new word in the industry with Linux servers. Containerization is... All of the good stuff um, from virtualization without all of the overhead of virtualization, or at least they try to minimize. Uh, sometimes you see it called para-virtualization. Well, projects like Docker and Linux's LXC containers, and don't worry if you don't know all of the jargon. I'm just sort of warming you up for this, because if you're going to work in this industry, you should know all of this stuff, or at least have a passing familiarity with it. So the reality is that when you're running these self-hosted services, there are going to be security problems. And unlike with Google or Microsoft, you are responsible for your security. So you're going to have to keep your stuff up to date and maintain it. Sandstorm and why you know hosts are good because if you go with their, their hosting options, they will help you maintain everything and make sure that it's up to date. Of course, you can also download their stuff and host it yourself, at which point you're responsible for keeping it up to date. But that's sort of their business model and sort of how they plan to make money. 
I'm not sure to what extent that's true with Sandstorm, but with Why You Know Host, it's a, it's a little bit more transparent. But the deal here with the containerization means that, you know, if WordPress, if you're running WordPress for blogging, for example, and WordPress has a security problem because WordPress is inside that container and your data, your data is isolated inside that container, the amount of damage that can be done is, is, is mitigated. It's not completely bulletproof, but it is fairly well mitigated in terms of risk management. Now you'll still want to back up your virtual machine. Like don't, you know, put all your stuff on one of these virtual machines at your house or in the cloud or whatever, and then not make any backups. There's no excuse for not making any backups. You need backups, external hard drives or, or, you know, other computers at other locations, you know, whatever, however that takes shape, but you also need backups. The nice thing about why you know host and Sandstorm is that they also have put a lot of work into a web UI to let you pick the different kinds of things that are available. And so I would, your homework is to go and try a quick demo of Sandstorm and why you know host and let me know in the comments, which one you want to see first, uh, of Sandstorm and why you know host. We're going to go on a little tangent with these services before we do the Linode DIY sort of self-hosted thing. Cause with the Linode DIY self-hosted thing, the next video is probably just going to be operating system installation and hardening. So the next video is probably just going to be, let's install Linux, probably Debian. Let's install a bunch of packages to lock it down and set up a firewall and let's make it. So the only external, uh, external service is SSH. And then, you know, you can still run a web server and other stuff. It's just, we're going to do it through an SSH tunnel. I'll show you how to run a web server on the internet. But really, you're just going to run everything through SSH because that is the most secure thing I can possibly show you. And if you elect to run a web server on that that's just open, that's totally fine. But know that there are bots scanning the internet constantly and looking for holes and open things. And it'll be fine today. But then when you neglect this thing for six months, then it's less than fine. <laughs> and if you're an overachiever in terms of getting your homework done, go browse the r self-hosted subreddit. I mean, you know, if you're DIY and you really know what you're doing, uh, this is enough resources that you can just take it and run with it and do really amazing things. If you're already doing this, if you stayed with, if you stayed with me this long in this video and you're already doing this kind of thing, then share in the comments what you've done and why you like it, because it will be encouragement for others. It's like, Hey, I set this up. I use this. I live and die by it. Oh my God. It's amazing. If you have a success story like that, put that in the comments and share it with us. And that'll be really good, you know, for the neophytes that are coming along and saying, Oh yeah, this self-hosted cloud, this is going to be a really good thing. And if you are curious about how to do the, uh, the home VPN thing, because you hadn't thought of that and that sounds like a good idea then, uh, you know, come along and let us know in the comments. I, I can, I can probably give you a, a sort of a quick and dirty textual how to, but I think now that I've mentioned it, you can probably figure it out on your own if you were already that far along. So this is going to be really exciting. I don't know how often the videos are going to come out for this channel, but it, it's going to be more often than it has been. And I, I thank you guys for being patient and I really appreciate the support that you've shown tech syndicate. So if there's anything else that I've forgotten, let me know in the comments. I'm Wendell I'm signing out and I'll see you in the forum.